。好啦，而家系诶拍照嘅时间，我哋想先先。Let's have a photo call。俾一啲诶道具吓，俾我哋嘅司长局长。Let's pass some props to the FS and his team。好，唔该晒各位摄影朋友啊，唔该晒啦。好踊跃。好，各位摄影朋友，唔该晒吓。Right, that's the end of the photo call. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. 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 Welcome to the press conference on Happy Hong Kong campaign. We have with us the Financial Secretary, Mr. Paul Chan, Secretary for Culture, Sports and Tourism, Mr. Kevin, Secretary for Home and Youth Affairs, Ms. Alice Mack, as well as the Executive Director of the Hong Kong Tourism Board, Mr. Dane Chang. Now, before we begin, let's have a look at a short clip. About Happy Hong Kong campaign. 喺香港，去到边都有开心嘅理由，有本地同来自世界各地嘅美食，食到边，玩到边，投入光影同嘉年华嘅世界，大人细路开心晒。想去特色市集，转个弯就到。流行文化呢度就系我哋嘅舞台，开心就喺你身边，大家都一齐嚟啦！好玩好食，开心积极。咁誒，我而家 ，Mr. Paul Chan, Financial Secretary, will now have the floor. Thank you. Is it coming through? Friends of the media, Hong Kong citizens, welcome to this press conference, so that we can brief you on the Happy Hong Kong campaign amidst the three years of the epidemic. We have been under a lot of challenges. After resumption of normal travel arrangements and after resumption of normalcy, we see a lot of vibrancy in the community. We are receiving a lot of visitors as well. There is a lot of、uh, vibrancy in shops,、uh, in restaurants, and we are now. Organizing a number of major events and activities to attract 
business travelers and tourists in the first two months of this year the export volume continued to decrease rather substantially however as i mentioned just now as the sentiment improves recently local spending has also increased and that somewhat offset the downward pressure of the export trade. On the whole, we envisage better performance uh, in the coming quarter. That means in the fourth quarter, things should pick up. And to continue with this trend, we have issued the consumption vouchers and we believe it's high time that we shared the joy with Hong Kong citizens. That is why a series of activities under the Happy Hong Kong campaign have been launched under uh, in the budget. And Hong Kong citizens will benefit from the campaign so that they can have fun in the various dining and leisure activities while supporting the economy. We have a diversity of programs suitable for different target groups. For example, we have the large-scale gourmet marketplace. We also have a large-scale Sealand carnival with Victoria as the grand stage. We also have activities relating to sports, arts and culture, and other performances. Altogether, over a dozen events. Now you may wonder what gourmet we can offer. In fact, for the first three months of the campaign across the territory, large-scale gourmet fairs will be held and the Home and Youth Affairs Bureau will be in charge of the event called Gourmet Marketplace. In the coming weekend, the first one will be held in Wan Chai on Hong Kong Island. Admission is free and also in other districts. We also have different uh, gourmet marketplace activities adopting different themes. And Ms. Alice Mack will give you more details later. And as for this Saturday, another event is a uh, movie for all. You can buy a ticket for $30 to enjoy a movie. And you, we also have um, Harbour Chill Carnival to be organized by the Hong Kong Tourism Board, under which uh, a series of performances will be held. And we can all enjoy the Victoria Harbour. Now, some sports activities. In August, the Hong Kong Jockey Club will organize a Youth Football Academy Summit and the Man Manchester United U16 will be playing two friendlies with us. Ocean Park, Cyberport, West Kowloon Cultural District, Disneyland. These partners will be rolling out different activities as well. So without further ado, let me invite Ms. Alice Mack, Se Secretary for Home and Youth Affairs, to uh, walk us through the details. Thank you, FS. Friends of the media, good afternoon. Now, as the financial secretary just mentioned, between April and June, on the Hong Kong Island in Kowloon and the New Territories, our bureau will be holding three weekend gourmet marketplaces. Different themes will be adopted. There will also be youth elements together with performances and uh, games for children so that the happy atmosphere can be created whilst we offer gourmet to uh, everyone. Like the financial secretary said, the first gourmet marketplace will be held on the 29th and the 30th of April at the Hong Kong Convention Exhibition Center. Over 100 booths will um, offer um, traditional Chinese global as well as uh, local cuisine. And then in May, in the first weekend, that is the 6th and the 7th of May, in Shatin Town Hall Plaza and Shatin Park, another gourmet marketplace will be held in the new territories. 
The theme is traditional Chinese cuisine together with um, the old Hong Kong style cuisine. We have over 50 booths for Hong Kong citizens to bring in their families and enjoy the gourmet together. And then in June, another gourmet marketplace will be held in Kun Tong Promenade Vessel on the 3rd and the 4th of June. Over 50 booths will be set up and this marketplace will be adopting the theme of Asian cuisine and fine wine and, and dining. As mentioned by the financial secretary, these three gourmet marketplaces uh, would adopt free emission. The first one, however, um, is emission by tickets at the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center. Starting the 26th of April, that is this Wednesday, tickets will be um, distributed at the 18 Home Affairs Inquiry Centers. As for the remaining uh, gourmet marketplaces in Kowloon and the New Territories, no ticket uh, will be required. For the first gourmet marketplace, some tickets will also be distributed on site, that is on the 29th and the 30th of April in the Hong Kong CEC. At the district level, we also have uh, different gourmet activities. And the district offices are now organizing similar activities at the district level so as to continue with this uh, series of uh, catering events. As you can see on the slide in Yao Chim Wong, Wang Tai Sin, Yunong, and Shem Shui Po, uh, similar gourmet fairs will be held. The goal is that at different places and at, on different days, we can uh, give uh, Hong Kong people a happy weekend when they can enjoy food and the environment. And now we invite Secretary for Culture, Sports, and Tourism, Mr. Kevin Young. Thank you, FS. Well, good afternoon. As the FS said, Happy Hong Kong is aimed at bringing activities of fun and gourmet experiences to the people of Hong Kong. The CSTB will coordinate with different organizations to hold these events. I will walk you through four events from late April to August. The Hong Kong Theatres Association will organize Cinema Day 2023, Ocean Park Chill All Night, and 2023 Olympic Day and Asian Game Fun Run Sports Carnival, and Harbor Chill Carnival to be held by the Hong Kong Tourism Board. I will walk you through these events. This Saturday on the 29th of April, in all cinemas in Hong Kong, we will hold Cinema Day 2023. This is organized by the Hong Kong Theatres Association to be sponsored by the Cinema Fund. This is an event under Happy Hong Kong, and it is also one of the events of Hong Kong Pop Culture Festival 2023. On the 29th of April, all cinemas in Hong Kong will offer uniform ticket price of $30 for Hong Kong citizens to buy tickets of different movies. We want to encourage the public to enjoy watching movies. We also want to encourage the public to enjoy going back to the cinema to watch movies. We also want to expand the audience. At the same time, we want to expedite the recovery of the filmmaking industry and the cinema industry, which were hard hit by the epidemic. Regarding the details, the Hong Kong Theatres Association will make announcements in relation to the details. The second event is Ocean Park Chill All Night. Ocean Park is immensely popular among Hong Kong citizens. 
it not only works on, on environmental conservation, it also brings a lot of happy memories for the citizens of Hong Kong. Starting from the 3rd of June, we will organize an event called Chill All Night in the lower part of Ocean Park. We aim at allowing 5,000 visitors to enter Ocean Park for free, bringing to them different experiences. There are soul of the ocean and visions of Hong Kong, including live band shows, DJ shows, booths, etc. Visitors and tourists can also enjoy catering discounts inside Ocean Park. Ocean Park will make announcements in relation to the details in due course. On the 18th of June, in West Kowloon Cultural District, SFNOC will organize 2023 Olympic Day and Asian Games Fun Run Sports Carnival. Different families will be able to soak themselves in the atmosphere in a carnival from 9.30 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The public can go to this sports carnival. There are not only demonstrations as well as experiences. There are also Hangzhou area and different experiences. The Hong Kong Tourism Board will also bring to citizens of Hong Kong called Harbor Chill Carnival. The beautiful Victoria Harbor will be the backdrop. There are different performances, including music, sports, etc. Citizens of Hong Kong will be able to enjoy the beautiful scenery of Victoria Harbor while taking part in different events. I will now invite Mr. Deng Chang, the executive director of the Hong Kong Tourism Board to walk us through this event. In July, this carnival will be hosted. Let us put the PowerPoint slides back up. Let us continue. Harbor Chill Carnival is one of the important events under the Happy Hong Kong campaign. This is hosted by the Hong Kong Tourism Board. This is a summer sea to land carnival with Victoria Harbor as the backdrop and as the main stage. We will bring together different cultures, sports, music from around the world. It allows the public and tourists to immerse themselves in the beautiful scenery of Victoria Harbor and the brand new experience. This is a brand new attempt by the Hong Kong Tourism Board for five weekends in a row, starting from the 8th of July. From the 8th of July to the 6th of August, these events will be held from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. This is open to the public with free admittance. The location is in Wan Chai Promenade. From the west, it starts from the Golden Bahini Square, all the way to the east, Causeway Bay Typhoon Shelter. It occupies an area of 26,000 square feet. There are different facilities for the public. This is a new attempt and a new event for this long promenade. A lot of public actually walk along this promenade. They will be able to enjoy the scenery of 100 degrees of the panoramic Victoria Harbor scenery. They can also walk in the breeze along the promenade. These are some artists well, these are some artists' impressions. 
Well, I'd like to say that these pictures actually do not do justice to the uh, real scenery. You can see right here, there is a stage on the water. We will invite different singers and artists. There are different types of music, including pop music, band shows, as well as different cross genre music shows. There are also fireworks displays. So the public can enjoy music as well as the mesmerizing night view scenery. There are also a diverse range of arts performances. Groups as well as individuals will have performances on the streets. They will bring you new experiences while showing the diverse culture of Hong Kong. We will add X game elements. We will have BMX bikes, skateboarding, which are immensely popular extreme sports among the youth generation around the world. There are also break dance, a new Olympic sports event. There will be demonstrations along the promenade. There will be an outdoors venue to showcase different artistic moves. Citizens can actually share these clips on online social media platform to showcase our charm. These events will run from the 8th of July until the 6th of August. There will be a special version of a symphony of lights showing the mesmerizing night view of Victoria Harbor. This summer, we hope to see you along the promenade. This happy Hong Kong is not only for the locals of Hong Kong, but also welcome tourists to come visit Hong Kong again. Thank you, Dame. Right, uh, I'll take questions from the floor. On the last row, this uh, reporter in a blue suit. I'm from TVB, good afternoon, FS. You have so many events under the Happy Hong Kong campaign. What is uh, the estimated cost? Now, I see that most of these activities are organized by the government. And is there any room for participation by the private sector. I see that these series of events will be held all the way until August. Now, by then, um, the consumption vouchers will have um, been exhausted. Um, perhaps you should wait until July when more, see more activities are being held. And about hotel room prices, I see, uh, I understand that uh, these they are soaring. Will it affect tourists uh, coming to Hong Kong? We are finalizing the details of these activities. We we'll aim for perfection. And uh, at this preliminary stage, uh, we expect to spend about $20 million on the activities. Apart from activities run by the government, for example, the Hong Kong Jockey Club will be inviting the Manchester United U16 to come and uh, play the friendly match together with some training activities with us. Meanwhile, we also welcome other suggestions as long as these are suitable activities. Now, I mentioned the Vocational Training Council. The VTC will be hosting some activities relating to, for example, design and some uh, cuisine or cooking shows. So meanwhile, if um, some organizations would like to take part as well, we of course welcome them. About the timing of these activities and why not having more activities in July. Now we've had some headwinds in the past three years. Now with resumption of normal travel arrangements with the mainland, we have built a positive sentiment and people are going out and about and we want people to be able to eat, play and have fun. As I mentioned, 
in the beginning of this press conference, we still need to continue to support the recovery of the economy because in the first two months of this year, the export volume dipped quite substantially. So we take a three-pronged approach in boosting the economy, export investment as well as local spending. It will take some time for investment to yield results. So meanwhile, I really hope that uh, people can spend more so that whilst having fun, we can also help stimulate uh, local spending and improve the local economy. As for the golden week, now we expect to see lots of tourists coming in. Be it international visitors or visitors from the mainland, uh, they just have to come and see for themselves uh, what Hong Kong is like. Now please tell us which media outlet you represent and please limit uh, yourselves to just two questions. Let's take another one. Last row, further back. This male reporter in the blue suit. On my side, please. Good afternoon, I'm from Ming Pao. Now I see you have a series of activities uh, straddling different months, as uh, say, including Golden Week and a peak season. Do you welcome overseas tourists uh, taking part in these activities as well? And uh, will you implement the crowd control? According to you, roughly $20 million will be spent on the campaign. Now, how will the money be spent as far as the operations are concerned? Will the subventions be granted to organizations? Will there be KPIs? Now, Ms. Alice Mack earlier said that for the gourmet marketplace, no KPIs will be set. How do you make sure that um, the uh, blunder that happened in SARS relating to the Victoria Harbour show will not be repeated? Now, we have a series of events. Say, for example, the AFCD last year held a local farmer's market uh, with great success. Uh, it took place in the flower market. I also went there and we're inviting them to hold a few more market fairs. And then um, we also have an international or global cuisine uh, festival uh, called at Viesta in November. We also have other participating organizations such as the Hong Kong Jockey Club, uh, Science Park, as well as Cyberport and the VTC. They will be running some activities uh, for the public to enjoy without needing subsidies from the government. Whereas for, for larger activities, large-scale activities such as gourmet marketplace, we need to set aside funding for the purpose uh, of um, paying for the operations. Uh, right, um, that, that's all. The next question is about KPIs. In 2003, Harbour Fest was held. As you know, this is different from the Hong Kong Harbor Fest in terms of scale and nature, and this is for all Hong Kong people to enjoy. Uh, about crowd management, of course, for the gourmet marketplace, we'd like to encourage participation. The more, the merrier. Now, for the gourmet marketplaces in Kowloon and the New Territories, because of the uh, Location, admission is free, whereas for the one on the Hong Kong side, tickets will have to be distributed. Some 100,000 tickets will be distributed, in other words. And starting from Wednesday, these tickets will be distributed at the 18 Home Affairs Inquiry Centers. We also keep some tickets for distribution on site uh, at the event. But for the purpose of crowd control, we do encourage members of the public to get tickets in advance. Now, you talked about the lack of KPIs. Well, in fact, last time you asked whether 
KPIs to be drawn up to gauge happiness? And the answer is in the negative, of course. But you see that we all put a smile on our face in attending this press conference. So as far as the Happy Hong Kong campaign is concerned, the goal is that um, there will be a smile on everyone's face after taking part in the activities. Next question. This uh, lady reporter in white. RTHK. So um, the first uh, the first thing is um, to follow up on the previous question. So um, how would you evaluate or measure the effectiveness of the whole campaign, the Happy Hong Kong campaign? Um, because you said you wanted to bring joy to the community and also boost the economy. And my second question is about the um, um, how, uh, the carnival by the harbour. So you said that will be a breakthrough. So could you tell us um, a bit more about the details um, and how many people do you expect uh, will attend the carnival? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Perhaps let me uh, invite Dane to answer the, uh, the harbour chill first. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this, is the, this is the first time that we organise such a carnival uh, because uh, we have, uh, first of all, um, for Hong Kong Tourism Board to stage an event. Now, this is a new format for us. Uh, secondly, this is, uh, when, when I say it's new, because it's the venue is new. Uh, this venue, venue, as far as I understand, has never been organized uh, mega events. So this one, I think, uh, in terms of its scale, is pretty big an event. Uh, we are also trying sort of different formats, as I said. Uh, there will be roving performances on cultural, uh, on music and the uh, the performances by uh, various artists or artist groups will be ongoing uh, from six o'clock until eleven o'clock uh, every weekend so on Saturdays and Sundays. That's number one. And secondly, also the first time for us to try out a stage, a floating stage, actually on uh, on the water with the pyros as a backdrop, and of course with our famous Victoria Harbour night view. So I think that would be. Uh, something quite tremendous, uh, and we would like to uh, have this, organize this uh, to make Hong Kong residents happy as well as together uh, enjoyable for our visitors. Yeah, as to the uh, evaluation and measurement of the success of this uh, campaign, I think it is pretty difficult to have a very uh, well defined uh, numeric uh, criteria to be established. Uh, because at the end of the day, whether people are happy or not, it is indeed a very emotional and uh, very uh, very kind of personal experiences. But we would like to organize uh, as many as different kind of activities as possible so that we can offer a wide variety of options for people to choose and to suit uh, the interests of the different uh, sectors of the community. Uh, just like uh, the different uh, uh, gourmet gatherings, uh, the district uh, uh, food festivals. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, given the, the current uh, still to be reinforced economic situation, uh, if we are able to sustain the economic growth, uh, to sustain the uh, the employment situation, as well as giving people the confidence and the sense of happiness uh, in the city, that would be most important. And it is indeed a very difficult to to very difficult to measure. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I have a question. Next question. Nearer to me, the female reporter in white. I'm from Phoenix TV, good afternoon. Do you expect, how will this campaign Happy Hong Kong help the retail trade in Hong Kong? We have food truck program, which was not very quite ideal. Will you take this opportunity to make adjustments and to reactivate this scheme or to relaunch this food truck program? Thank you we will not relaunch this food truck program. That is because it does take some time as well as investment for us to relaunch the food truck program. We want to organize a wide variety of activities on this occasion. 
for our gourmet marketplaces, apart from food truck, we actually have a wide variety of cuisine. We have invited LegCo, the catering industry legislator, as well as other trades to take part in this program. We hope to introduce to you international cuisine, as well as different snacks from different districts. Phase one consumption voucher has just been distributed with the next phase being in July. It will be some 0.6% in relation to revitalizing our economy. There are voices in the newspapers. The consumption voucher remarkably helped the catering trade. With Hong Kong returning to normality, we hope that more Hong Kong people will make spending in the community. This will be conducive to the development of the economy of Hong Kong as well as the retail trade and the catering industry. Next question. Near to me in the last row, the lady in white. Commercial radio. I'm from commercial radio. What economic benefits will be brought by the $20 million? Has the government made such a calculation? For the gourmet marketplace, will the coordination be arranged by the legislators? Will there be open bidding? You mentioned that there would be youth appeal in gourmet marketplaces. How many fairs will be run by young people? This program is mainly for locals in Hong Kong on attracting tourists. There was a Hello Hong Kong campaign for Happy Hong Kong. We want to allow citizens of Hong Kong to join different activities and to have fun. For example, some gourmet activities for free. So we do not factor in tourists. There is no specific number in relation to tourists. But then we will not rule them out if they come to join us. In relation to arrangements for fairs, I will defer to Miss Alice Mack. Thank you. For fairs, we hope that we will include different delicacies. So with Mr. Tommy Chan from the Legislative Council, we have been in touch with different vendors. They will take part in this program through different consulates. Different countries will also source different delicacies to join our fairs. There are youth organizations and youth entrepreneurs. They will join our gourmet marketplaces. If you come to our gourmet marketplaces on Saturday, there is an area dedicated to youth entrepreneurs. These young people provide different delicacies. There are also youth entrepreneurs selling their own products. In these marketplaces, there is a special area It is a play area for children. If young parents would like to come to these gourmet marketplaces, they can let their children play in these areas and then they can roam around the fairs at ease with different consulates and different trade representatives as well as youth organizations. We will source suitable fairs. Next question. So, over here on my side, this lady reporter in blue. I'm from Now TV. First of May is coming soon. You talked about the Cinema Day and the Gourmet Marketplace. 
Is it that you only take into account Hong Kong citizens but not um, tourists uh, for these free activities? Will you be able to uh, achieve the objective of attracting tourists? Now, uh, is it that only physical tickets will be distributed and roughly the cost of uh, these activities. I will first ask Mr. Young to say a few words on the Golden Week. Your question was on the Golden Week in May and whether mainland tourists would be uh, coming in and uh, taking part in uh, these activities getting all the tickets. I think the goal of Happy Hong Kong campaign is for more activities to be held for Hong Kong citizens to take part in them. And we're not saying no to mainland tourists. We also welcome international, I mean, tourists from overseas. But um, at the moment, our target is local residents. And anyway, I don't think mainland or overseas tourists will go see a movie simply because the um, you know the tickets are just thirty dollars. So indeed, when tourists come, they will find more activities in which they can enjoy. But all in all, the goal of the campaign is to bring joy to Hong Kong residents. The Gourmet Marketplace, again, Ms. Alice Mack. is a mission by ticket for the first Gourmet Marketplace. In fact, last year, we also have different weekend bazaars and fairs. We didn't require tickets to be presented. Whereas for the three activities across the territory, in the Kowloon, uh, in Kowloon and the New Territories, no tickets will be required because we'd like to encourage more to come as long as the venue permits. Anyone can just come in and enjoy the gourmet marketplace for free. Now for the first Gourmet Marketplace on Hong Kong Island. However, this is an indoor venue. So because of the venue constraints, we need to um, implement a crowd control. As mentioned, we have 100 booths together with a youth area and also a play area for children. We need to keep count of the number of participants inside the venue at the same time. So tickets will be required. Starting from Wednesday, tickets will be distributed uh, in the 18 Home Affairs Inquiry Centers. As for the number of tickets, uh, at this stage, uh, we think that uh, each uh, person should get a maximum of two tickets. Some tickets will be distributed on site uh, at the marketplace. But in order to uh, help us with the arrangements, do get the ticket in advance at the inquiry centers. After the press conference, you can check out the details of the Gourmet Marketplace at our Facebook and IG pages. Next question, last row in the middle, this lady in blue, uh, the one next to you. I'm from Sky Post. To pick up on the last question, do you have a breakdown of the cost involved uh, for the number of activities in the campaign. And also, Ms. Mack, can you further explain the gourmet marketplace? How is it different from the other food fairs previously held? And how do you ensure that the grassrooters can benefit from the uh, events? Will there be concessionary um, fairs for them? As for crowd control, because there is no limitation on who and how many can enjoy. And for the show at the Victoria Harbour, will there be any uh, control as for the size of the crowd? As mentioned just now, the $20 million funding is a ballpark figure. Um, there may be more activities to be added later. 
for the gourmet fairs at the district uh, level um, and also the gourmet marketplaces but depending on the venue uh, some may require more funding support such as uh, rent to be paid at the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center. Now I'll give the floor to Ms. Mack. Now you ask about the difference between gourmet marketplaces time and the food fairs that previously held. The biggest difference is that this time is free admission because we want to encourage more people to come save and accept the first gourmet marketplace because of venue management uh, we need to control the number of entrants so we need to distribute tickets in advance for admission about uh, crowd control now at the venues our staff will oversee uh, issues relating to safety as for the second and the third gourmet marketplace They will take place in the plaza and in an open space. There are numerous exits and entrances. The venues should be able to accommodate more, so no tickets will be required. Anyone can come and enjoy the food and the uh, environment and the atmosphere in the gourmet marketplace. As for the Sealand Carnival at the Victoria Harbour, I will ask Mr. Chang to give you more details. We are preparing the estimates, but we are confident that um, the uh, crowd size will not exceed the capacity along the waterfront promenade. It is an open space. Uh, it is a large uh, site, and we are working with the relevant bureaus on the crowd control and crowd management. But we are confident that uh, things will be all right. Because of time, the last two questions. The lady in blue. This is from Field TV News. So uh, my first question is, why the government um, still launched Happy Hong Kong campaign, which costs like uh, millions of dollars, despite some economic challenges, like you mentioned, um, lower exports? And how would the Happy Hong Kong campaign um, benefit the city in terms of um, the economic per, um, perspective. And also some said there is a manpower shortage to support the Happy Hong Kong campaign. So how did and how will the government tackle the shortage in terms of manpower issue? Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, to the drivers for our economic growth are basically export, uh, capital investment and private consumption. Export, we are facing uh, difficulties, particularly in the first two months of this year. The decline was quite uh, substantial. Uh, investment, the sentiment is getting better and better, but it takes time. So in the meantime, if we want to mitigate the downward economic pressure and to sustain our economic recovery, the best option is to stimulate private consumption. Um, well, although after reopening the border, we have seen visitors coming, and uh, after removing all the social distancing restrictions, uh, domestically the sentiment is getting better and better, and people really come out to spend. But we do need to reinforce this spending pattern and to give additional impetus to it. Uh, that's why we launched the consumption voucher scheme area. Uh, for the Happy Hong Kong, in addition to trying to stimulate private consumption, sustaining economic recovery, we also want to take this opportunity to, uh, to inject some more happy and positive spirit into our community. Uh, at the end, after all, we have gone through three and a half very difficult years. Uh, we really want to see many more smiling faces. And, uh, well, you know, when people can come out with their friends or families to join different activities, uh, particularly those activities uh, free of charge, I think hopefully that would bring back more positive uh, uh, sentiment and happy experience for the people of Hong Kong. Um, as to the manpower shortage, you know, 
all this event, uh, we uh, say, for example, for the district-based event, we mobilize uh, mobilize uh, people in the district to help out. So in terms of the demand for manpower uh, for this kind of events, should be uh, very substantial. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Uh, Hong Kong certainly will be benefit, as I mentioned, if we can increase consumption, that would in turn provide support to our economic growth. And you know, in Hong Kong, we have, uh, well, 98% of our businesses are SMEs, and they employ altogether about 45% of our workforce. And many of those jobs are comparatively uh, uh, comparatively junior jobs. So if uh, we are able to sustain the economic recovery, provide, giving business to SMEs, uh, that would enhance their business receipts, enhance the employment, and hopefully also improve the income of their employees. Yeah, thank you. Oh, uh, well, the last question, the gentleman in white. Thank you, FS. Thank you, directors. I'm from Cable TV. It was mentioned that it is difficult to estimate the economic effectiveness of the Happy Hong Kong campaign. Do you have any assessment of the effectiveness? Otherwise, how can you persuade the public then the public funds are actually well spent? Or it will even exceed our expectations. Second question, on the road to recovery of the economy, a lot of citizens are actually worried about water charges, electricity charges, or public transport expenses. Do you think the campaign Happy Hong Kong can help citizens of Hong Kong? How far can they go to help citizens of Hong Kong? Some citizens think that instead of organizing this campaign, you should have directly helped them with their livelihood issues. What is what is your response? We can see from this angle, the economy is recovering, but still we need to consolidate the recovery so that our journey to recovery will be smoother. to ensure we have the momentum for recovery to go forward, to drive economic development and to relieve pressure of citizens, we need to take a multi-prong approach. In the budget, you can see that we have subsidies for water charges. We also have consumption vouchers to support the economy on the one hand. On the other hand, while we are poised for recovery, a lot of citizens are still under pressure this will provide assistance to some citizens for CSSA. It was mentioned in the budget that half a month would be offered to CSSA recipients for consumption vouchers, 5,000 to each citizen. This will incur an expense of 30 billion or so. And there will be a 0.6% of stimulation in relation to boosting the economy. the positive economic development will still take time. But can I say that this is not worth the efforts? Well, actually, in our, daily, in our daily life, apart from making money, apart from going to work, we also want to lead a happier life. The original intent of the campaign Happy Hong Kong is that when we look back to our sticky patch in the past three point three and a half years. We can see more people leaving Hong Kong to relax. We also see tourists coming to Hong Kong. These are multifaceted experience. After Hong citizens return to Hong Kong from travel, they can also take part in local activities. Apart from traveling, they can still 
choose to spend time in Hong Kong and have fun. This is our original intent. We have been in touch with different organizations to hold different events. For Ocean Park, for example, they have, well, they have several nights open for the public. And I hope different organizations will also play their part. In the course of economic recovery, we want to inject positivity to the community. Speaker not coming through. Well, happiness is subjective. But overall, it is important to create the, the right social atmosphere. If we stay positive, if we're happier, we'll be able to bring joy to others. When we have a positive atmosphere in society, that means we can bring positivity to society as a whole. That's the end of today's press conference. Thank you. Thank you.